Thank you. Your Excellency, President Obama, members of the United States Senate and U.S. House of Representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I would like to take this uh, opportunity to um, acknowledge some of our guests here. First of all, Senator Rob Portman and Senator Tom Udall, two of our four co-chairs in the Senate. <laughs> Additionally, I'd like to add, uh, thank other senators who are also here with us. Senator Crapo, Senator Johans, Senator Lautenberg, Senator Nelson, Senator Stabenow, and Senator Wicker. And I'd also like to thank my hometown representative, Jim Moran, for coming here tonight. I know that the uh, House is not in session, but thank you. who are here tonight. Ambassador Almada from the Delegation of the European Union. <laughs> Ambassador Bungu from Gabon. Ambassador Matheson from Belgium. Ambassador Nate Fu from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Ambassador Odembu from Kenya. Ambassador Suretsi from Botswana. And Ambassador Stevens from Sierra Leone. Ladies and gentlemen, our mission at the ICCF is clear. We believe that as America has encouraged the growth of freedom, democracy, and free enterprise in the developing world, that we have the ability, and interest, and the opportunity to see that America also supports good natural resource management there as well. To do this, we have brought together the strongest association of corporations, international governmental organizations, and NGOs. If you can take a look at the collection of logos on the back of our Partners in Conservation, you can see the uh, depth and the expansiveness of the industries and NGOs that are represented uh, by ICCF. We are very fortunate to have support and leadership in the mission from our advisory council partners, Conservation International, the Nature Conservancy, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and the World Wildlife Fund. We're also very happy to have with us here tonight, some of uh, our corporate uh, member leaders. Um, I'd like to also personally um, thank for coming Anna Schneider from the Volkswagen Group of America. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Barbara Heffernan, who's here from SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment, and also Donna Harmon, who's here from the American Forest and Paper Association. Thank you so much for being here tonight. The purpose of ICCF is to make the expertise and innovation of this great assembly of partners readily available to like-minded policymakers who understand the value of natural resources to improving lives in the developing world. I'm always happy to talk about the U.S. Congressional International Conservation Caucus and the fact that it represents over a third of the United States Congress and is the second largest bipartisan caucus on Capitol Hill. We bring our members together regularly to discuss these vital topics at briefings, round tables, policy summits, and in the field on congressional delegations with members and staff. Sustainable economic growth and development, utilizing our natural resource base, has the potential to lift millions of people out of poverty in the developing world. But it cannot happen if we do not manage these natural resources effectively and efficiently. Nature provides such essential services as Water, the food we eat, the energy that powers our lives, and the material that we use to keep roofs over our head. That natural resources really are the foundation of wealth and creation in our capitalist system. Therefore, as we prepare from going to from six to nine billion people on this earth, we need to figure out ways that we can get more out of our natural resources to grow the pie of our oceans, if you will, to grow it in our forests so we can figure out how we're going to feed, clothe, house these nine billion people. We all recognize the immense value of the natural world, and we seek not only to maintain, but also to grow this wealth for our children and our children's children. In this way, the ICCF's chief job is as natural resource wealth managers and bringing NGOs and corporations and policymakers together to create great environmental and conservation solutions in the developing world. 
Lastly, the benefits of conservation can be felt right here at home. International conservation is in America's best interest. In this globalized world, securing the resources and the stability of the developing world will spur the growth of the economy and ensure our strategic interests, making America safer, stronger, and also looked at as in a better light throughout the developing and developed world. By building partnerships across sectors and across borders, we can ensure a brighter, better future for generations to come. Thank you very much, and I'd like to ask the podium David Barron, who is the founder of ICCF. Thank you, Johnny. About the time our friends in the ICC, Tom Udall being one of the founding co-chairs in the, in the House originally, started the caucus. Uh, Johnny was uh, starting Georgetown University. Uh, he'd just gone through a puberty, he thought he knew everything. <laughs> he became a volunteer, uh, finished Georgetown with honors, came to work for us, helped us start the foundation. Um, and then he went off to LSE and got a master's in environmental economics and Cambridge he got an MBA and came back and now he's running the place. So I'm living on a little island off the coast of South Carolina where all the Harrison comes in. Um, back home. I almost lost my accent after 30 years up here with all these Yankees. Um, you know the caucus was up and going but there wasn't um, much to it like there isn't much to most caucuses that don't have some driving force behind it. And Tom Udall and Ed Royce and Clay Shaw and John Tanner, the original co-chair, suggested we team up with some of the strong NGOs, which we did. But it started with Pete Selden. Um, Pete, honored guest of ours tonight, President of Conservation International. We were laughing with Harrison in the section about Pete and me being in the Congo together, advancing the trip to Colin Powell. And we were flying over the rainforest and we lost power. And we really thought we were going down. We had a 23 year old, 23 year old pilot that uh, didn't really know what he was doing. Um, it turns out the air filter had come loose and somehow it jiggled back, but we landed. But uh, I accused Pete. Uh, who's Jewish of making the sign of the cross because I did. He swears he didn't do it. But, um, we knew we were all going to die, and we thought, what better group of people to be on the front page of Time Magazine dying together? So we almost enjoyed the experience. But I told Pete about the caucus and the fact that we wanted to get together. Which we, we, we need to get some brain trust behind it. And he got it just fast. Not very many people see big things and encapsulate them and make full decisions quickly. He said, I'll sponsor them. And so we started programs with CI and didn't take very long before Pete and the CI team said, this needs to be bigger than CI. It needs to be not just conservation international, it needs to be conservation. And so that's when WWF and the Nature Conservancy and Wildlife Conservation Society came in. But that's how we got started. Pete, thanks. And Harrison, you. Pete Harrison was our superstar. And, and, and the first honorary, actually, as our good steward at, when we launched the foundation. Um, that night, we gave the first Teddy Roosevelt Award, which is for Conservation Leadership and Government. And we gave it to former House member who's now co-chair of the ICC in the Senate, Rob Porter, for his authorship and leadership on the Tropical Forest Conservation Act. And so, Mr. President, you, you're you our Teddy Roosevelt recipient this year. Um, you follow in a long line of, of um, some strong leaders, Rob Porter and Prince Albert and, and Tony Blair and others. But we're happy to have you with us. Um, Botswana is a gorgeous country, 
Um, I told the president earlier that, that I have almost a third of my life, 30 years, has been in Africa. I have a farm there, and I love it. It's my second home. But the best 10 days I think I ever spent was in Botswana. I told him we were poaching, but we really weren't poaching. We were just camping out where we didn't have permission to camp out. They didn't want it. Secret roads, all well that none of the doing. So, and I had the honor of posting, uh, as a member of the board of the Africa Safari Club, I had the honor of posting the president when he was still just a general. Um, and his lovely mother, Lady Ruth. I'll never forget that. That day uh, we spent at the Air Space Museum. Um, I started in Africa as a cold warrior, fighting for democracy and democratic institution building. And a lot of that still, a lot of the challenges still exist in that continent. But in my entire time in that continent, I've never met a man that showed more integrity than this one by standing up and denouncing his neighbors who approve of dictators when their other neighbors don't have the guts or the integrity to do it. We started as a U.S. thing, Democrats and Republicans, and then NGOs, and then corporations. And a lot of them here tonight, Johnny mentioned a few, we, we could mention many. It's not very often you get Exxon and Audubon in the room together, but we have. We, we are making policy in the center, but we're framing it from the extremes. We're not boiling things down to some tepid uh, common denominator. We're trying to bring the extremes in to find solutions. Sometimes people want to know why you have Exxon at the table. They're part of the solution or they're part of the problem. That's what I'm here to say. We are pro-growth. We are pro-people. We are we're pro-industry. But we're also pro-oceans and we're pro-forest and we're pro-clean water and we're pro-wild animals. But this wasn't enough. So Tom Udall one morning at a breakfast in the house said, Dave, I think you ought to talk to the Indians and the Russians and the Chinese, these great consumers of natural resources that don't have much of a conservation effort to them. So it started as thinking and working. And now we have a great caucus in the Russian parliament. All parties belong to it. We have a great caucus in the Canadian parliament. All parties belong to it. And its founder and chairman, 20 year MP, is here with us tonight, medical doctor, Dr. Keith Martin. So we launched an initiative that now we call the Conservation Council of Nations, and we have 36 countries that have joined, and we're growing. We'll launch it to the UN in September. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, it involves Morocco and Monaco and Mongolia, and it involves Indonesia and, and South Africa and Kenya. Um, it involves a lot of our European allies, Ambassador Matthias is here tonight, Belgium is a partner. We hope that the, the European Union is going to join us. Everybody twist this man's arm right here, the Ambassador from the EU. Eight, eight, of your, eight, eight members of the EU joined. So um, you don't have to wait till you have a majority. But um, this Conservation Council of Nations is, is the opportunity for us to build caucuses and parliaments around the world that we can then learn from and share from our experiences. It was designed really to be a bilateral tool for our caucus, but now it's grown into something bigger already, and we realize that, that there, there can be a lot accomplished regionally, and that we can be an inspiration in some cases for policy formulation in these parliaments, as they can be uh, teachers for us in, in our own. Um, I've said enough. Um, I would like to recognize a couple of other people who have been with us for a long time and a lot of, a lot of support to us. Uh, Mark Green, former member and ambassador to Tanzania, one of the best ambassadors we ever worked with. Mark Bellamy is here too. Mark, where are you? I haven't seen you tonight. Uh, if you all don't know Mark, you should. Great ambassador, did a Herculean job in Africa. And now he's director of the African Center for Strategic Studies. Uh, Rick Lazio. Um, Rick almost made it into this house, but uh, maybe eventually. 
But Rick is on our advisory board now and a great resource for us. And we're sure happy to have you with us. I also want to introduce Chris Opperman. Chris is a diplomat who, here with his wife, Marky, also a diplomat uh, from South Africa, who did, they're heading up our effort in South Africa now to build an office in South Africa and to, and to build our African base and parliaments from, from there. So we'll, we'll be close to Botswana. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here tonight, uh, being part of this. And help us, help us <coughs> continue to grow. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Seligman, who's the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Conservation International. Stop that guy in the back seat from mumbling so loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where I remember it. And, uh, and uh, from there, I agree. Uh, just to, uh, to uh, kind of just say a few words. Uh, first, it is a great pleasure and honor to have uh, uh, His Excellency President Ian Common here uh, tonight. And, and uh, you are uh, the worthiest recipient of the ICCS Teddy Roosevelt. The International Conservation Award, and uh, you will, uh, Senator Portman will describe that in greater detail later on. I just wanted to give a little anecdote that I've known you for uh, 15 years, you've been on Conservation International Board for 12 or 15 years, and last year uh, I got a real taste of your competitiveness when, uh, for my 60th birthday, you sent me a video. Uh, uh, where it was actually a brief video showing you running an obstacle course with, the, with your armed uh, forces in which you won. And when you got across the finish line, you turned to the camera and said, okay, Peter, beat that time. <laughs> and, and so you, you really are a champion, and, uh, and we're glad that you will be honored for this evening. I just wanted to acknowledge all the senators and congressmen Moran for being here. Uh, uh, we know that it's hard to take time from your really busy schedules, but it's very important that, that you do this, uh, and we, we appreciate your attendance and, and engagement. Um, as John said earlier, we we're at 6.9 billion people on Earth, and we're headed to 9.2 billion, and that's going to be in four decades. That's 2.3 billion more people in four decades, 2 billion entering the middle class. Two billion new people entering the middle class in four decades. Uh, that's a 33 percent increase in population in 40 years. The population of the United States in 1940 was 2.2 billion people, and we're going to have to double our supply of energy, food, and water in four decades. And so, if you really want to think about it, our children will a freight train come right out, and that's really why we need. Uh, heroes and we leadership, and that's what this is really all about. Is for us to figure out how do we develop in the right smart way where we produce agriculture, where we produce energy, and where we protect ecosystems that are absolutely essential for uh, the long term well being of all societies and all of our descendants. And, and uh, I know that the president has, uh, is leading an effort in this country to create a, a sustainability strategy. Something that will be unveiled uh, in uh, in the beginning of next year, and that's the type of leadership that we need, the type of leadership that we should encourage, support, and uh, and really recognize. And so, um, I'm just really delighted that you're here and you took the time to make this journey. And uh, I hope that uh, that uh, that all of us will will hear what you have to say and, and really listen because you're a wise leader, and uh, and this is the moment to lead you. Extraordinary. So have a wonderful meal, and uh, I think uh, Tom Udall is, uh, yes, <clears throat> thank you. As, as is uh, very typical in Washington, President Connell, when you speak,
speak last, the, the same as every, everything's been said, but everybody hasn't said it. So uh, I, I want to try just in a very simple way uh, to honor you because uh, there are two things I want to talk about this evening. First of all, uh, and it has been said, but I want to say it in a little different way. The thing that excites me the most about this International Conservation Caucus is our bipartisanship. And Jim Moran, we know that it's really succeeding when there are more Republicans here than Democrats. That's the thing I'm the proudest of. Dave Barron, who, when he started this, he didn't have any gray hair, believe it or not. I had a little more hair on the top of my head. But I told Dave, he was trying to organize this, and he said, you know, how do we make it work? And I said, the best way to make it work is that every time you have a Democrat, you have a Republican. And you match that up and you keep it going. And so I, I, as I look around the room and I see so many of my Republican senator colleagues here, I'm very, very proud. And that they outnumber the Democrats even makes me more proud <laughs> that they're out here and they're participating. And President Kama, the, the last of... Uh, the last thing I want to say has to do with conservation and your record and why uh, you're getting this award. Dave talked about the leaders, but the basis of this Teddy Roosevelt Award, and by the way, Teddy Roosevelt was a Republican. And, and Teddy Roosevelt, a hundred years ago, took on the big interest in America. And those interests were pillaging the land, raping the land. There was all there was this huge concern, and and he stood up, and he found a way to take them on. And the reason we're giving you this award is because that's what you're doing in Botswana. And, and my visits with you earlier this evening convinced me. Uh, that your approach is the best approach when it comes to conservation. We now talk about sustainability, but I think conservation is the key word. And when you said that we have more elephants than our carrying capacity, and you talked about more than 100,000 elephants and it was beyond your carrying capacity, and I said, well, are you going to cull them? And, and you said, no, we're going to find a way so that it can work sustainably and they can live on the land and the people can live on the land and all of us uh, can live together. So you, you have, you, your spirit, the things that uh, you have talked about, the things that you're doing, that's why you're getting this organization's prestigious Teddy Roosevelt Award. And, and uh, I think Rob Portman uh, my my colleague and co-chair got it just before you, so it's very appropriate because he did the same kinds of things in the executive branch. Thank you for being here, and thank you for the good work you do. Enjoy your dinner, and afterwards we'll have the uh, presentation of the award. That's David Barron talked earlier, he said that this group has evolved over time and it started small with only a few members of the House of Representatives and no corporate sponsorship and no environmental groups and just kept growing and evolving and improving. I got the first Teddy Roosevelt Award and it was back during those nascent days. Since then, think about it, Prince Albert, Tony Blair, President Obama. I mean, uh, this is all awesome. I couldn't find anybody who accepted the year I got it. Um, but, John, good to be with you. Good to be with the irrepressible David Barron. He reminds me of Meryl Streep this evening. In a strange sort of way. I have a farm in Africa. I don't really remember that. How do I ever do with David Byrne? Uh, good to be here with Tom Newell and so many of my colleagues. There, there are a number of senators here who I have the honor to work with now, some of whom I was in the House with. Um, and I thank you all for being here, one of whom was Secretary of Agriculture when I was 
at the trade office that we traveled down to together, Mike Johansson, and uh, done a lot of work in Africa on the agriculture side. Uh, I was proud to be part of uh, ICCF when I was in the House administration and on the, during my tenure in the real world uh, to be on the advisory committee. It's a good group and I believe in what they do because they support smart resource management in the developing world. And that's a good investment. Good investment for our country. Uh, I think it should be a fundamental part of our foreign policy approach. Of course, it doesn't work unless you have two partners. So perhaps the most critical element to having this be successful is to have collaboration leaders uh, who believe in that same ethic and share that vision that conservation and economic growth can, in fact, should go hand in hand. They complement one another. But it requires leadership, not just in this country, but of course, more importantly, in the development world. So what better example of visionary leadership than what we have tonight um, with His Excellency President Ian Kong. Uh, the Botswana that uh, President Kama uh, is currently leading is a very different country than it was when he was uh, in the military. He has transformed it in many respects. It's a very good ally of the United States. Um, he has been providing a good example of whole leadership in promoting human rights, building institutions of democracy, and as I said, focusing on sustainable economic development. As part of all this, uh, he's also led the way specifically on conservation issues. He has a passion for it. Uh, as some of you know, in the northwest of Botswana lies the Okavango Delta. I've never been there, but I've heard about it more tonight. And apparently, it's an arid, almost desert-like place on nearly half of the year. And then when the floods come, it becomes a paradise of lush islands and waterways and populated by some of Africa's most iconic species, the elephants, the lions, rhinos, cheetahs. Um, I want to go there. Um, but Okavango is also home to people. And those people have been there for a long time. And for unborn generations, they've had a relationship with the land. So the question that faced Botswana uh, and President Kama was, how do you protect this beautiful landscape and extraordinary biodiversity? while allowing appropriate commerce to develop, um, local communities to be able to improve their way of life and to have them be part of the solution. We talked tonight a little about that at the dinner table and how to have ecotourism, for instance, work with the people by providing some of the benefits. Uh, he actually started on this challenge before he became president because he was Lieutenant General of the nation's military. And as he told me this evening, uh, when there wasn't as much of a need to have a military presence on the border with South Africa, that military could turn to more internal problems. And one was poaching, a plague of poachers that were destroying wildlife and so many structures and support. And he responded very quickly, deploying uh, the defense forces against those poachers who thought to rob the country's citizens of their natural birthright, which is these natural resources. And he was successful in that effort. Now as president, he's continued to find that balance to both protect the ecosystem and help the people with innovative policy solutions that promote ecotourism, appropriate agriculture on the edge of the Delta, as we talked about tonight, and also agriculture innovations around the country. Uh, new initiatives have deliberately sought to engage the local communities. Again, this is about sustainable development and having communities feel they are part of it, so they get a share of the ecotourism dollar, and by doing so, feel like they're part of it. President Kami has demonstrated great forethought in all of this, diversifying the country's economy to include more varied and sustainable forms of income. As I said earlier, he has a passion for conservation. He's been very involved in the common and wildlife uh, issues, the Rhino Sanctuary, the Chobe Wildlife Trust, the Mokolodi Wildlife Foundation, and along with that, extensive work with Botswana's own system of national parks and protected areas. He is ensuring by doing so that Botswana's natural resources are as treasured as their diamonds are. Uh, he also has been involved in CI, and Peter mentioned that, but what Peter didn't mention is there are other board members here from Conservation International, so he begged me to mention that this evening. Um, I, I really wanted to do it anyway because one of them um, is a fellow who received an award from this same group previously, and 
showed up again tonight, and he's the reason most of us senators are here. Um, and that's their support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Work he does with CI using his, his pilot's license in a small plane and I think looking for coaches as well. And also his work in New York Central Park and vice chair of uh, Conservation International, so he is rolling up his sleeves and very engaged. The other board member is here, who is here, is Ann Friedman. Uh, and Ann and I had a chance to visit for her this evening, but I think Peter now and I have fully complied with your request. Are there any other board members from the party? Let's go back <laughs> to President Collins. Thank you. Um, so, President Collins, thank you for your willingness to be here tonight and to let us honor you, not only as Botswana, home to this extraordinary biodiversity we talked about, pristine ecosystems as that wealth of natural resources, but thanks to you, it also now as a country provides an extraordinary example to other developing countries. And for all these successes and for your ongoing work, uh, I'm very proud on behalf of everybody here at ICCF to present to you the prestigious 2011 President Teddy Roosevelt International Conservation Award. I wish to express 
particular gratitude to the ICCF for recognizing the modest achievements that we have made towards conserving our natural resources in Botswana. It is without doubt that we share the same inspiration and belief that conservation is necessary for sustainable development and crucial for poverty alleviation. Botswana does not look at conservation of natural resources for the sole purpose of tourism and for increasing revenues. Natural resources are the basis on which communities and nations derive their livelihood. Therefore, sustainable development is best achieved when resources are preserved to last beyond the need for immediate benefits and through consultation, how to share these resources for equitable distribution derived from their usage. Botswana could not have achieved what we have now had it not been for the careful management of these resources. The wildlife area in our country makes up about 30% of the entire surface area of Botswana, comprising national parks and game reserves and wildlife management areas and forest reserves. We have taken a deliberate stance to realize economic benefits from wildlife resources through both consumptive and non-consumptive uses, although the previous is diminishing. Our wildlife conservation policy was formulated with the overriding philosophy that utilization of wildlife should not be conducted in a way that depletes the resource base. Our tourism policy is deliberately marked towards low volume and high value to ensure that wildlife areas remain pristine. For this reason, we have also introduced community extension and outreach programs to engage those communities around wildlife areas in the management of their environment and creation of awareness on the importance of sustaining wildlife resources. The multiplier effect was the birth of cultural tourism. I'm proud that despite challenges, we have been able to conserve most of our wildlife species in their most natural habitat. Tourists who visit Botswana, and there are some here this evening, from the United States are assured of witnessing these in our wildlife areas. Botswana has a population of about 120,000 elephants. We have maintained and religiously followed the guidance of CITES and we are appreciative of the support that we receive and hope to continue receiving in managing our wildlife from your country, the United States, and from others. I'm also proud to note that through the support of your country, organizations which are based here, who are able to partner in awareness campaigns to promote wildlife conservation. Our latest effort was through the filming of the movie The Last Lions, which I'm informed has received wide support from the public around cities in the United States. I will encourage those among yourselves who have not yet seen the film to do so and therefore witness for themselves the world in which the big cats survive. Allow me to use this opportunity to announce that we have accepted the invitation as a country to be a member of the Conservation Council of Nations and we look forward to making our modest contribution towards its success. Allow me therefore now to conclude by once more expressing my most sincere gratitude for the recognition of me and my country through this award and I thank you for your attention.